News Talk 1340 KROC AM. Good morning. I'm Andy Brownell with Dick Seitler with oh. <laughs> Auto Tech 101. Better late than we, never, Dick we got to get this on a on a calendar basis where I can know when I'm coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you called me up late, the, right? Friday night? It you was, said to be on Monday? Friday. Did, I called yeah, you, you Friday morning. You forgot to call me? That was Friday morning. Yeah, Friday morning. Yeah. You called me up. That was my day off. <laughs> yeah. And I guess your, your brain had taken the day off, too. Yeah. Yeah. So the question was, Dick, did you have car trouble? No. <laughs> <laughs> is the number to call if you have a question for Dick Zeitler, Auto Tech 101. A uh, chance to talk to Dick about uh, things going on with your automobile, your pickup truck, whatever it may be, with an uh, internal combustion engine and, yeah. and all sorts of... We were talking about brakes. Uh, off the air, and so we might as well continue <laughs> talking about this because uh, I am fearful I have a nightmare in my hands. Uh, a van, my vehicle. Uh, now you know why to get rid of it. Yeah, excessive, <laughs> excessive pedal travel. Yep. Uh, Sometimes, or do you you had hard pedal at once. Sometimes. No, well, the mo- moment I drove it, I felt excessive pedal travel the first time. Uh, ABS light goes on okay. intermittently. Yep. And intermittently, it feels like the rear brakes are staying on. Staying on? Okay. Like, yeah, dragging okay. the rear brake. Yep. Because I'll stop and I will smell the the brakes the brakes from the back and mm-hmm. feel the heat off mm-hmm. the, the drums yep. of the back. Yep. And uh, so. So I so I really scare you with 1500 or $2,000 worth yes, of repair. Yes, you did. So what, because what, what, it what, sounds to me like if it has ABS and it has all all four wheels, it may just have the back ones dumping and the front ones dumping and the front ones are dumping. When and you the say back dumping, maybe explain what that means. Okay, the dumping is is when uh, ABS, where you lock up a wheel, it, it opens up a valve, and that valve, that valve releases that brake. Oh, so that's where that pulsing feeling is. So that's where the pulsing may come from because it's releasing that brake and it goes back to sump. So it goes back to the reservoir. So if that's the case, if that valve don't close or if it's got dirty brake fluid and dirt's in there, yeah, you know, just because uh, how many miles are on this? Over 100. Over Over 100. 100. If it had dirty brake fluid, that means that valve can't close in in the valve pack. And then all of a sudden you just keep dumping, and it just keeps going back to the reservoir. So the only way you are grabbing it is with them rear brakes. And when you push down, the last thing is them rear brakes are starting to stop you. If you're using them all the time, maybe they're hanging up, maybe they aren't. But you're using them all the time with the weight of the van, they're getting hot. Well, that's not good. And then the front ones aren't. The are dumping, and uh, usually it's just one wheel at a time, but. It sounds to me like it's a valve pack problem. Well, you would think if you, it's not a leak someplace, could it be a sensor on the ABS system giving it the wrong signal? No. no, it could be. It could be that you have air trapped in there and no one's getting the air out, and that's maybe where your where your shop is trying to look for. Uh, because when you usually go down on a brake system, you could, you know they worked on the brakes, and what happened was is they didn't get all the air out, and then when you go all the way down, as you're going down with the brake pedal. And then right at the end is when that light flips on, and then you go to the then you go to the reserve to stop you. It's kind of like me going up north with the camper. Remember that last time with the camper? I had no brakes on the pickup, no brakes on the camper, and I drove it all the way to two hundred miles away You're not from. You're supposed here. to admit that on the air. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I said I have problems with my vehicle. <laughs> so, the but, a, but ABS normally, when you talk about the dumping, it's happening in a millisecond, right? Yeah, it, it's bu- 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 it's bu- supposed to be just flip on, flip off. Take that wheel out of commission. Take that wheel off in that prevent. lockup. Yep. And the other way, if you have like anti skid on the same portion, it does the opposite. It lo- it, it kinda, drags it. It kind of drags it or locks it on for a few seconds. So that's the anti skid. Or traction control, if you had traction control, things like that. That's the opposite. The computer's doing the opposite. But you got an electronic problem here. So and, see, and, now you know why I kept my old van so long, yes. because you didn't have to deal with this kind of garbage <laughs> when you had the old van. You just had straightforward I tell you, brakes. You'd be better off if you took the wheels off the old van, put them on the new van, because you said they were last 10 years, yeah. <laughs> and they did, and I told you to get rid yeah, of them see, right away. They were wrong. Because they were that. all rust. They're still rusty, but they were wrong. <laughs> But, okay, so in these systems, you go, okay, I'm a person who 
This would be the first vehicle I've ever driven that had four-wheel ABS. Yep. The other one had two-wheel ABS, and that yep. would have been the rear wheels. And I'll be honest with you, 21 years driving that thing, that never kicked in. I yep. never once kicked in the yep. ABS system yep. over 21 years. I, I, I know how to pump my brakes, okay? Yep. I know how to stop in snow and ice. I've never had an issue yep. with it. Can you just go, you know what, I don't want this. But Can Ford, you shut them off? Ford, you can't just shut them off. That's the same, okay. Because that's manufactured into this vehicle. So it's you know integrated as part of the yes. entire brake system. In the system. minute the brake, mi- does the anti-lock brake light come on? Yes. The amber one? Okay. Yes, it does. Okay. So when it goes on, you're supposed to go back to regular braking system. Anytime a warning light comes on, it's supposed to revert back to the braking system. So it could be a physical deal, but like I said, if that control box ain't shutting it off, you may have to buy a new control box. Two eight two one. Um, yeah, no, that's my nightmare. Two eight two one two three four is the <laughs> number to call. Let's talk about your nightmare, not my nightmare. How's that? If you're having anything going on with your vehicles, um, we're getting ready, obviously, for winter driving here, Dick. Oh uh, yeah. And we all drove through the summer. We didn't have to use air conditioners much, thank yep. goodness. But yep. uh, you didn't have to use them tires. And well, yeah, yeah, you know. But yeah, that's one. That's the one thing you do recommend. Now, if you're going to buy tires, yep. now's the time to buy yep. tires. Buy, now's the time to buy the tires. So you get a good winter off you that fresh a, tread. Yep, yep. And you won't have pretty much on ice and that you have ninety percent not having a problem with tires if you have buy them now. You get about two winters on them, and then pretty soon you got back to where you are. But you still got good tread. So on good, got tread. We got a couple calls, so let's yep. jump to the phones right away. Dick Seitler's here, Auto Tech One Hundred One. Good morning. You're on KROC. Hi, I have Hi. a two thousand five view. Uh, it's a manual transmission. All of a sudden, it's like I have no gears. Is there a pins in there, like linkage, or is there cables, or how is that held together, or how does that work? You have no gears? Yeah, it the shifter just moves all over. Okay, so it come disconnected, the so you've got a couple of cables and a linkage that is either off. What happens is, is sometimes a clip falls out, and it, it, that holds the base of the cable, and when you go to shift, it pushes the cable instead of pushes the inner part of the cable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Yep. So the clink, the, so if it happened really fast, that means the clip fell off that holds the cable in place, and that's why you lose all your gears. And that yep. could be the that could be the solution to your problems finding out yeah. where it disconnected. It starts shifting hard and then it just quit. Oh, okay, that may be a broke. If it shifted hard in the cable. The cable starts to, or shifter starts to really move hard, and then you try to force it, then you broke the cable. All right. And then Thanks. that come on done. So All you're right. going to need a new cable. Uh, about how much does that run? Do you know? Have oh, it could, it all depends on the labor rate because now it's a hundred and some dollars <laughs> labor rate. It could run you a, a couple hundred, to maybe 300 bucks, some place in there. All right. Thanks. Uh-huh. All right. Thanks a lot right. for the call. Uh, that's that's funny. I just read how many transmit manual transmissions are in cars today. It used to be back in the seventies, eighties. It used to be about thirty uh, percent. It's down to ten percent cars coming out of the factory with manual. Everybody's transmissions. finally admitting everybody's that, going to the automatic. Well, they're finally admitting that it really wasn't all that much fun to drive them. No. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. You're on with Dick Zeitler, Auto Tech One Hundred One. Oh, hi. This is Jerry. Hey, yeah. Jerry. I had a question more just out of curiosity. Like, if I'm driving around with this brother of mine, he always puts his car into neutral, like when he stops at a stop sign. Yeah, or, yeah. Um, He's playing you know, the electric I'm, car theory. <laughs> I, is, is there any benefit to doing that? Because I don't understand why he does that. Well, Great question. It, it, basically, you coast. You don't have any, you don't, when yeah. you deaccelerate on an engine, it uses gas. Yeah, but Even if you're, the deaccelerate, it, it wastes gas. But if it goes out the exhaust. If, if you already stopped. Yeah, but it, yeah, he, yeah, you know, he's stop, already stop, stopped. He comes neutral. up to a stop. He throws it in a neutral. Throws it in yeah. neutral. Yeah. So he's coasting. Yeah, but I mean, he's, he's sitting still. I know. I know. He's coasting. Puts the bat in the gear, and away he goes yeah. again. I I have done that when my <laughs> car says E, but I never run my car on E. But I have run parts trucks that were on E, oh, okay. E, and I coasted downhill in neutral to get to the okay. back to the parts department. But if I pull up to a red light and I put it in neutral, am I saving any gas? No, you're not saving any gas sitting there. That's what I mean. But you're saving gas. You're saving the efficiency of gas being burned in the engine if you coast to the stop. Light. Okay, so is he putting it in neutral before he uh, comes to a stop? Uh, no, just like when he stops. Oh, <laughs> just like when he stops. 
then I don't know why he's doing that. (laughs) There's no benefit to doing that. There's no benefit to doing that. But there is benefit to doing it before you get to the stop sign. There is a little bit of benefit because, (laughs) yeah, because your deceleration on a gasoline engine, you're forcing, you're wasting all that gas out the exhaust because it just dumps it. Because you don't need it because you don't want it. I, yeah. Although I did have a vehicle once that had such a rough idle that I could throw it in neutral and then it would smooth the idle yeah. out yeah. when I was at a stoplight. In fact, oh, okay. in, in fact, I say the electric car theory. I, I've been in the electric car for three days now driving oh, yeah, electric cabs. You like it? Yeah, well, I don't know if I like it. It feels like the old Dynaflow when you go to take off from a stop sign. You wonder if you're going to go. If that's what it feels like. It feels like a Dynaflow transmission back in the old Buick. Is there a hesitation, you're telling me? Uh, it's kind of a hesitation. It's it more like a slip. Like you, huh. you're going, but you're really not going that fast until the engine kicks in. Oh, are you still there? Oh, yeah, I'm still okay, here. Okay, yeah, anything else for Dick? Uh, no, I just had to, just for curiosity, <laughs> I had to know. If so why, you can, you know, you yeah, can tell him next time. Yeah. Okay, it's a complete waste great. of time. It's a creep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Thanks. you very much. Yeah. All right. All right. Bye. Two, bye. Two eight two one two three four is the number. Good morning. You're on Carol C with Auto Tech One Hundred and One. Am I on the deck? Yeah. Yes, you are. Say, uh, I know with tires. Uh, um, I've heard some stories that, uh, and I know it's true that uh, you go to a car dealership or or a tire place, and uh, they sell you tires. There's a uh, uh, on the tire itself. Um, it tells you when it was, uh, when it was made, yep. and um, uh, a lot of times they'll sell you a tire that's uh, five or six years out there. When yep. They have new, t- they have other tires there, but a lot of people don't know what those uh, what those things mean on the tire. A lot of a lot of now, the I'm na- gonna hang up and I'm listening to you, Dick. All okay, right? great call. Thanks. A, a lot of the stuff on the side of a tire, a lot of people don't know, uh, even don't. knowing the size and how to recognize the okay, size. I got of the, the tire. size part, but yeah. But uh, as far as the R's and the yeah, you know, okay, P, P's and yeah. So okay. what, what does it all mean? Yeah, what does it all mean? Yeah, as far as I don't know. Uh, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but there is a number, like he is saying, there is a number of manufacture date. And if I had something sitting in the refrigerator, I got to use the the latest number of the manufacturing date of that food right. or it goes spoiled. Same thing as tires. It sits there, and if I don't know where they store them, they most of them in a right? shed. Yeah, more of them in a the shed. They get old, they crack, and then you put them on the car and put stress on them, they crack really a lot. So they're trying to get rid of the old date on the tire, the oldest date on the tire sure. made to just get the, the inventory through. Oh, yeah, you, you know. It. Right. And if they got the same tire, but what the problem is, is some of the companies change their sizes, <laughs> like in the metric size to the to the standard size, yeah. and you go and you start changing them, and then all of a sudden they find out, oh, they got a whole bunch of these old tires. What do we do? And some may slip in some of them old tires where the new metric size is supposed to be used. So keep your eyes so open. So keep your eyes open. And also, you're probably going to be better off with somebody moving tires at a high volume. Oh, yeah. Because they're yeah. not going to sit in a no. warehouse. So you long. go to a tire place, they got a lot of high volume yeah. that they're selling. So, you know, where some dealers don't sell that many tires. 282 is the number. Good morning. You're on Auto Tech 101. Uh, yeah, I could just help answer the gentleman that just called in yep. a question about how to tell how old the tire is. Yep. If, if you take the serial number of the tire that will be on uh, one side of the tire on the sidewall. Yep. You take the last four digits, and it'll tell you the week and the year it was made. Okay. In other words, so it's uh, going to go zero nine fourteen. That would be uh, would be in uh, September of fourteen. Yep. 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 Of fourteen that it was manufactured. Yep. So and and the, the average life of tires nowadays they recommend replacing them at seven years. So. Yep. Excellent information. Yep. And Thank I got you. and I, I got some I you. got some that's sitting on my truck that I used it to pull my camper up north and they there was no cracks in them when I left and <laughs> when I come just back up north. because they just sit there yeah. and get sun baked and when I went up north and came back they all full of cracks. Oh, two eight two one two three four. Good morning, you're on Carol C with Auto Tech One Hundred and One. Hi. Hi there. I have a uh, ninety eight Deville. Mm-hmm. And just recently, like it rained for a lot of days last week. Yeah. And now I see that uh, the sunroof, something is coming, water is on the floor in the back oh. seat. Oh, yeah, yeah. The good old uh, seal started drying Was out. it a factory sunroof that, or an add-on? But it doesn't seem to be 
leaking out of the sunroof. It just seems to get water on the floor. Well, as far as it's running back along the tracks and then running onto the floor. You oh. know what I'm saying? It's running, it's running down your pillar post or down to uh, through the windshield area of the pillow post or the door corner post and it's running down and then run back down onto the floor it, so i'm it looking for there. new seals you're looking for new seals but it may be coming from a windshield too not necessarily from the sunroof but uh, oh, if you okay. think it's coming from the sunroof you're going to start to see stains on the ceiling on the like the headliner and that stuff's going to start to show some stains yeah i just started to do this last week okay okay so so it's in the sunroof but but as far as, is it, is it a factory sunroof or one that's been put in? Yeah, no, it's factory. Okay, okay. Well, you're going to have to take it to a specialized person to go into that, and it's probably going to have to go back to the dealer to even About have it checked. a thousand bucks, huh? Oh, uh, it could be more than that. Oh. Oh, I think I'll get rid of the car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a nice car. Though. Yeah, I know it. I know it. They are, but <laughs> sometimes they just, that's the d- nature of the beast. That's why I was advised by, was it you? Yeah, don't get a sunroof. Don't get a sunroof. And I says if uh, if the good Lord meant to have a hole in your roof, He would have put one there. Yeah, because <laughs> they are they're trouble, aren't they? Yeah, they yeah, are. And I'm looking at one out in the you. parking lot out here. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Good morning. You're on Carol C. Yeah, I got a couple of comments. I guess you could say more than questions. Number one, the guy that talked about putting the car in neutral at the stoplight. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, back in the day when everybody had standard transmissions, you used to do that because you thought it was easier on the throw Oh, there. sure. Yeah, yeah. Of course, with an automatic, you don't have that. That's now you true. don't want to put anything in neutral for fear of what's coming up behind yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking of the. S- I was thinking of the same thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And, and another thing, since you're talking tires this morning, people need to know that just because it says on the side of the tires maximum inflation forty five psi, that is not the pressure you run your tires no i no. see i see i hear and talk to so many people that say well the tire says 45 pounds i didn't know that's maximum inflation yeah. your tire your tire pressure is going to be on your door jam some yeah. somewhere inside your gas cap door yep. and most yeah, of them right. are running what 30 35 yeah about 32 28 uh, about 35 yeah yeah so yep. look at your so, door jam. Right. thank you right, thanks, great. everybody's guys. everybody's calling up with great information today yep Good morning. You're on with Dick Seidler. Maybe I should be late every day. <laughs> <laughs> no. How's that? Oh. <laughs> good morning. You're on with Dick Seidler. Thanks for calling. Uh, good morning. 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 I have uh, about 26,000 miles on my tires. Yep. They're original, and I had about seven years. Is it about time to replace them? 26,000, seven years. It, does it sit inside the garage or outside the garage? Uh, it sits inside. Oh, sits inside. So, so. Pretty much you can uh, just keep an eye on them, keep them well inflated and stuff like that, and you should be able to get almost the life of the car out of the tire. Well, but, but to a certain th- extent, you ain't putting how many miles on? I only got 26. You got 26, so you're putting on... Uh, a couple thousand a year. Yeah, a couple thousand a so year what, or so. Was it brand new, these tires? Off, were they they with, come with the car, Yeah, but they? usually they only give you 40,000-mile tires on the cars. Yeah, well, 40, yeah, 40 the, 50. The, yeah. These are the original ones, yeah. These are original, yeah. yeah. So, when you get up, when you get up over thirty, then start looking well, at that tread. And then on the other hand, we go back to talking about you go down to the grocery store and stuff like that in the wintertime, and here we got slippery, icy roads. Do you know how much better it would be if I had a new set of tires on for for four or five hundred bucks? That would probably be worth the while instead of the hassle of meeting somebody you don't want to meet, you know, like I, somebody I, else. I, yeah, I, I rotated the tires and put the the back ones on the front, so their front ones are pretty good now. Yep. Okay. But yeah, uh, just keep an eye on that tread because if you know, keep an eye on the tread and I know uh, those a lot of those cars they don't give you the best tires. And they have the that rare bar across the top with the with the quarter and if you can see the whole president's head when you put it on top the rare bar, you should be able to should know when to get tires. But right. if it sat inside it should be pretty good. Uh you don't drive much in the winter time, so yeah. I would kind of say Are there any tires as good as Michelin? Um, as far as, yeah, Michelin is a hard rubber tire. That's why they don't wear out as fast. Is that right? Yep. And then, uh, you, there were been reports where you had hard rubber tires, not just Michelin, but you had hard rubber tires and actually you can set off a static electricity. So when you get out of your car in the wintertime, you can the feel this stamp when you hit the, when you hit the door handle, it snaps on your finger yeah. and gives static electricity. And that's because of hard rubber tires because it creates the rubbing 
of a material onto the highway, huh. and that's what causes it. It can be caused by your clothing and the seats inside the right. car, but more than likely that. They had reports on car people going up to tow roads and putting their change in a person's hand in a snap because it grounded right there, and they, were, and they had a recall on some of the tires because they were too hard. Wow, but all the manufacturers make a range of... Yep, softness and hardness yep. of the rubber. That's the that's the the mileage difference. Oh. How long they last? Oh. So with the forty thousand, they're probably pretty yeah, soft. Pretty soft tires. And I've seen some with bad sidewalls. Yeah. Two that two could plus. Curl your hair too, couldn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it could. <laughs> Thank you so much for the call. Okay. All right. Thank have you. a good day. And we this has been an abbreviated form of Auto Tech <laughs> One Hundred and One with Dick Zeitler. Next time we'll do the hopefully the whole hour, right, Dick? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> It's only 45 minutes. Yeah, thanks a lot for everybody (laughs) calling in today. It is 47 here in downtown Rochester at KROC AM.